Hello and welcome to Excel-DashboardTemplates.com. This is Steve Equals True. Please visit my blog at Excel-DashboardTemplates.com so that you're sure to get other great posts related to your Excel dashboards. All right, today I uh, wanted to show you a technique um, from a user question. They had a list of tenants, so they had, say, a dozen tenants, and they had different lease expiration dates, and they wanted to create a timeline that would show the different expiration dates for each one of their tenants in an Excel chart. Here's what I came up with, and you can kind of see we've got uh, four every two weeks we've got on the horizontal axis. We have points listed here for each one of the uh, tenants that they have on lease and when their lease expires. So I wanted to show you how I go about making that tenant timeline chart. Okay, so here we have the data set up. Uh, we've just got a simple uh, tenant name. We've got a lease date. And what we want to do is we want to create another text range, uh, data range, for our chart. And we're first going to start out with uh, the tenant uh, plus the expiration date. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to do a simple concatenation without the concatenation formula. You can learn more about this on my blog. But I'm going to do equals. I'm going to choose cell A3. Do the ampersand. And then... Uh, I'm going to do the cell B3, um, but typically I want to put, let's say, a space in there and then do another ampersand and then do cell B3. Hit enter and look at that. What it does is Excel is going to show 41594. That is the serial date for the date of November 16th, 2013. So to get around this, what I need to do is I need to change just B3 to actually be a text function where I'm going to say take that value and format it to make it look like a date. So we're going to go uh, month, month, slash, day, day, slash, year, year, end quotes, put the parentheses there, and now we have our data set up like we want uh, where we're going to have Mike and we're going to copy this down. So this is going to have each one of the person's uh, name and their lease expiration date. Now I'm combining these because I'm going to create these as labels in our chart. Uh, and so uh, I need to combine those together instead of having them as two separate data points. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to create a stacked bar chart. And the first part of my stacked bar chart is going to be when the lease expires minus one day. That way, when we set up the next column as the expiration date, it is going to show uh, the actual date of the expiration. So I'm just going to do an equal sign. I'm going to go over and hit B3. I'm going to subtract one day minus one. Hit enter and copy that down. So you can see instead of the lease expires on the 16th, but I'm going to do this as a fill. So this is going to be our lease fill series and that is going to be um, the lease expiration minus one then we want lease ends uh, this is just going to be the one we're going to add that one right back in there and uh, put that into our chart as well so now what I want to do is I want to chart all of this as a stacked bar chart so I'm going to go up to my insert ribbon I'm going to go up to the bar chart button and then we have a stacked bar chart. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at, at how this looks uh, because I'm going to show you one little quick technique here. Notice that the dates are put in here in conjunction with, so these fill dates are put in conjunction with the labels for the vertical axis. It's thus, everything is just one, not what we were really looking for. Let me undo all of that. What I recommend, and I showed you this on my blog about a week ago, we want to actually not put that date in here, right in that first cell. So I moved it up one. So I just have a blank in the top left-hand corner. I'm going to highlight my range. I'm going to go up to the Insert ribbon. I'm going to go to the Bar Chart and do a stacked bar chart. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, in our expanded chart so you can see how this looks. And as you can see, now uh, we have this one series, which is the lease fill series. And then you can see these tiny little red dots here, uh, which are our, when our lease ends. Uh, so we have created our chart by just removing that one space. We can always put it back as our column header, but the top left column header is going to always cause us a problem. So what I want to do now to make our timeline look a little bit better, let's go ahead and get rid of 
uh, these blue bars here by making them no fill. So I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to hit Format Data Series. I'm going to go uh, to my fill options and I'm going to do no fill. So it's going to hide that series and look, you can see all the different red data points. This is where all of our different lease ends for each one of the people that we have in our list. Let's do a little chart cleanup right now. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the legend. Just click on the legend, hit my delete key. I'm going to go over on the left hand uh, vertical axis and hit my delete key after I selected it. Uh, and then what I want to do is I want to select each one of these small data points here, uh, which are for the lease ends. I'm going to go up to my layout ribbon and I'm going to do data labels. And I'm going to do more data label options right here at the bottom. And what I want to choose is we set up those, na those concatenated names. We don't need the value because the value is going to be one on them all. And we want to put it on the inside end instead of the uh, inside base or center. Let's go ahead and take a look at what our chart looks like now. So now you see each one of our data points, uh, our, right, our names and dates are right next to our data points lined up in our chart. I just want to do a little bit more chart cleanup here. Probably want to right click on this axis, do control one. Let's change this instead of being every 50, let's do it every 14 days, which is every two weeks. Uh, and let's fix this here to, oh, I don't know, somewhere around July 15th, which I think is, uh, let's try 369 and see what we get there. Uh, no, that's not quite it. Maybe 469 was the number. There we go, 470 is actually uh, July 15th. And then let's change this to 640. And that is the end of that date. So, okay. So you can see down here we have 715 of 2013. Every two weeks, we're going to have a new grid line all the way out till December 30th. So this takes us out to the end of the year. I do want to format this chart just a little bit differently in that I want to change the number to be a short date. I know it's all within this year, so I don't really need to see the 2013 on every single major grid line. That looks a little cleaner. Also, I don't like these lines. They look like uh, jail bars to me. So I'm going to select these grid lines, hit Control-1, and bring up my Format Major Grid Lines dialog box. And I'm going to change my line style to be a dashed line. Click on Close. And uh, there you have it. That's how to create a very simple Microsoft Excel stacked bar chart timeline where you can see each one of the data points have a name of what it is for. You can see where it falls into the different timeline. Uh, if you sorted your data, it could show you a little bit more uh, sequentially, but uh, this is just how the data was presented. And uh, hopefully that helps you create your next timeline for your next Excel dashboard. Once again, please subscribe to my video channel. Also, visit my blog and sign up for my blog as I do have other posts that don't always have videos like this one you saw here. It was a challenge uh, that a few people responded to, and uh, this is my solution, and you will find that on ExcelDashboardTemplates.com. Thank you.